hi hello my dear friends welcome back to the channel in this video i will talk about the implementation approach number two so in the previous video i was talking about the approach number one that was related to frequency division multiplexing fdm there were a couple of disadvantages one was uh, that the bandwidth was not utilized very well the second disadvantage was there were more hardware components so let us see whether uh, we can overcome these uh, disadvantages uh, uh, you know by coming up with an alternate implementation or not basically I will try to keep the same implementation logic that is uh, to divide the entire bandwidth into sub bands okay so whenever we divide into sub bands basically the baseband signal uh, should be assigned to each of these sub bands right it is equivalent to shifting the baseband signal to the corresponding sub band frequency so that operation is given by this local oscillator and mixer okay then uh, finally that will be up converted using uh, up converted uh, using center frequency and the signal generated is shown over here similarly for the other sub band as well the other um, you know baseband signal would be assigned to uh, that particular sub band frequency and it should be up converted and finally uh, you know all these things will be multiplexed and the multiplexed signal is uh, shown over here uh, so that would be transmitted over the air now if you see number of local, local oscillator required here was equivalent to number of sub bands chosen if there are more sub bands then we needed more local oscillator so we need to reduce these local oscillator so another one is uh, if you see clearly the center frequency fc is common in all these uh, uh, sub band uh, chains so this can be taken common uh, this can be taken out and we can try to uh, you know implement this after this multiplex multiplexing operation so that is the next circuit which i had written over here after this multiplication after this multiplexing operation um, the local oscillator corresponding to center frequency fc is implemented so so here i have uh, included even dac as well in each of these chains uh, so at the output of multiplexer we can write the equation as shown here okay so here again i have not uh, reduced any local oscillator uh, local oscillator in fact uh, we we are seeing one more extra local oscillator here with respect to fc here if we clearly see for these two chains we needed uh, uh, you know the baseband signals uh, in parallel so i will write the next uh, circuit uh, and block that is a serial to parallel uh, converter okay so then the circuit i have not changed it is exactly same even the equation uh, is exactly same but here uh, from here what logic what we can what uh, we can think is uh, can we implement this uh, all these operations okay in the baseband because baseband is done in the software right so it will save a lot of uh, local oscillators so definitely whatever signal present at this point which is x of t that should be let's say let, let us see you know how to sample this how to produce the equivalent uh, you know uh, discrete baseband signal to this uh, uh, to this uh, signal let us say if i do the sampling with sampling rate as shown here uh, let's say n is the number of uh, sub bands and delta f is the sub band size or you can say sub carrier bandwidth if i choose the sampling uh, uh, frequency as this and if i choose uh, the sub bands of this form okay where uh, the sub band fk will be represented by k times the sub band size so basically if i take the first sub band as 1 megahertz then the second band sub band as 2 megahertz 3 megahertz each with uh, uh, you know sub band size of 1 megahertz okay so if i take these operations and if i substitute here and if uh, if i substitute here then i would get the uh, expression as shown here this is same as that of idft uh, this is this since this is the idft equation uh, the baseband signal should be assigned in frequency domain that is one point and this should be multiplied with uh, this, these exponents and then this should be multiplexed okay so the output of that multiplex will be x of n to this if i do the dac uh, you know i should be in a position to get x of t 
So whatever I just explained, uh, the same thing I will be writing in the circuit form. So that is my uh, circuit here. Okay, x p of t I have taken here. Um, so this uh, k is equal to zero to n minus one will say okay we need all samples together so serial to parallel converter and these two multiplication I have done uh, here in the baseband then summation uh, the multiplexing and then to this x of n I am I am giving the DAC okay I will get x of t this x of t is same as what we had seen in the earlier circuit and then once we do we can do further you know the up conversion with FC and we can transmit it further okay so so here the here you can clearly see that uh, uh, two things you can clearly see how are we choosing uh, the sub bands okay the sub bands we are choosing such a way that they are closely packed and uh, uh, and uh, there is no god band between them okay so, so if it is 1 megahertz this is 2 megahertz and then 3 megahertz it goes like that right as per uh, this equation so uh, Mm, let's say the, the exponent number one and exponent number two these two are orthogonal to each other this represents the subcarrier or sub band these two are orthogonal to each other and if, if, if we uh, take the summation over that particular sub band size then these two will be orthogonal you can actually verify using expressions i will not go through that uh, so since these two exponents are orthogonal to each other and st still we are using the concept of, uh, of frequency division multiplexing uh, this particular approach is known as orthogonal frequency division multiplexing and i mean if you want the samples uh, for uh, n is equal to 0 to uh, number of uh, sub bands basically e here n then we need to do this operation okay we need to do this operation uh, n times for using for loop in spite of that we can implement this using idft and uh, uh, you know the parallel to serial converter to get all of these n samples uh, in one shot so that is my next circuit that is sh uh, shown over here so i will take all n samples together with serial to parallel converter i will do idft and then i will have all n samples at this point uh, x of n uh, varying uh, from uh, uh, you know n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 and uh, then I will do parallel to serial converter and then I will give to DAC then further up conversion will happen and it will be transmitted. So my TX part the blocks that should be implemented in case of OFTM in the TX part is ready. It, ne it needs IFFT. Okay. Here if you clearly see especially in the previous circuit this is implemented uh, the, the, these are all implemented in baseband right and the uh, mainly the my hardware components are starting from the DAC DAC and then we need one local oscillator to do up conversion to the corresponding center frequency so all other operations are done in the baseband and hence uh, you know lot of uh, hardware is reduced and in fact uh, the disadvantage is related to god band is also eliminated because here we are able to packly close uh, uh, the subcarriers So in the receiver, uh, in in the down conversion uh, part, uh, uh, to implement uh, this particular logic, we need one local oscillator which generate cos omega ct, and we need a low pass filter, right? This low pass filter uh, now is required for this entire 10 megahertz for the entire bandwidth. Okay, so the one uh, small disadvantage could be that. Uh, we need a wide band or low pass filter that is one thing okay uh, and one more thing is um, unlike in uh, fdm we need not have to have the low pass filter for each and every sub band we hope uh, the concept is uh, very clear um, um, at the receiver side uh, we have to do exactly the reverse operations of what we had done in the transmitter side so we need uh, fft here so after these operations whatever we are transmitted here we will be able to get back so final in summary what i would say is the approach number two uh, uses uh, uh, uses the uh, sub band uh, which are very close to each other and these uh, sub band frequencies are orthogonal to each other uh, and uh, 
and we use uh, the, the similar logic to that of FDM. So this particular approach is called as OFDM. With this approach, we will we are able to you know utilize the bandwidth uh, efficient. Also, since uh, the subband size is reduced, uh, the uh, the symbol duration has increased, and this has helped to uh, reduce the ISI in the system. Uh, so. Um, so this is this looks a very promising implementation and in fact uh, this is what is uh, the we are using in case of 4g and as well as 5g and uh, it is currently used in our practical mobile system